Today we are going to talk about IBD versus IBS, the differences, the similarities, and can you have both of them? My name is Maggie and I am a 27 year old nurse who also happens to have Crohn's disease and an ostomy bag. We educate about chronic illness, we talk about some uncomfortable topics and just generally share about living life despite having a pesky little disease. If you like this video, I would so love and appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much and let's get into it. The reason that I am making this video is because I've had a number of people come onto my channel and comment saying, OMG, I also have IBS. And I thought it might be helpful to clarify the differences between IBS and IBD because they are two totally different things. And I have IBD, which is also called inflammatory bowel disease. That is an umbrella term for actually multiple diseases, but the two main ones are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. IBS, on the other hand, stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. So I will tell you, back in the day when I was first diagnosed, I was 100% guilty of calling my disease Irritable Bowel Disease, which is not at all what I have because that's not a thing. So let's start with IBS and what that means, what it feels like, what it does, and then we'll get into IBD. We'll talk about some of the similarities and the differences between the two. IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, is actually very common. It's like 10% or more of the population has been diagnosed with it, which is kind of crazy. Um, it's more common in women. It doesn't increase your chances for things like colon cancer or IBD, which is awesome. And it is considered a functional disorder. If you don't know what a functional disorder is, there's actually uh, a few of them. I think like fibromyalgia is classified as a functional disorder as well. Um, but basically it means that you have the symptoms, you definitely have the symptoms going on, but we don't have an answer as to why that's happening. You've had multiple tests done and nothing seems abnormal. So these functional disorders are now thought to be a disconnect between the brain and whatever you have going on. So in IBS, the brain and the GI tract. These are my own personal thoughts, my opinions. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if you're an IBS patient especially, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel as though IBS patients, <laughs> that title is sometimes used as a scapegoat because you're having all these symptoms and sometimes doctors don't know what the hell is going on with you. So they use the term IBS to kind of give you a diagnosis. Obviously, I don't have IBS. I have IBD. And I know that for myself and I've heard from many other patients that when you've gone on for years struggling with symptoms and you just don't know what it is, the relief that you have when somebody finally tells you, oh, well, you have IBD, I mean, it's great. You're like, okay, I'm not crazy. Something is going on with me and they're able to identify it. I feel as though patients feel like the term IBS is just used to be like, oh, okay, this is what you have. It has a name, so now leave us alone. <laughs> I know that might not be the case, but that's just my thought about it. And I, I feel bad for IBS patients that, you know, it, it makes you wonder if, if there were more tests out there, if there was a way to discover, is it not a brain GI tract? disconnect? Is there something going on and we just haven't caught it yet? That isn't to say that I don't believe that there's a brain GI or you know whatever other system disconnect. It just makes you think about it. So that's kind of my thought. I've just I've heard from a few IBS patients telling me yeah my doctor diagnosed me with IBS because they can't find anything else wrong with me. I feel like I feel like IBS might be played too loosely and maybe, maybe there does need to be more uh, research and um, discovery individually for patients. Okay, so all that being said, what I just said 
is a great description of IBS or it gives you a little bit of insight as to what IBS is and it's basically the symptoms without having a reason for those symptoms to be happening or at least an easy to tell reason for those symptoms happening. So people get symptoms very much like IBD where they're having abdominal pain, they're having bloating, they're distended, they might be having diarrhea, they might be having constipation, they might be having a mix of the two, which actually is three different subsets of IBS. There's IBS-C, which is IBS constipation, IBS-D, which is IBS diarrhea, and then IBS-M, which is IBS mixed. You might feel nauseated, you might have um, difficulty going to the bathroom, you might feel like you always have to go, which a lot of IBD patients also have. The thing that they do not have though is, you know, they get very similar tests done that IBD patients get done, like MRIs, x-rays, CT scans, scopes, and everything comes back normal. They don't have things like weight loss or um, blood loss that you see in IBD. There are no structural changes, you don't see inflammation, like again, you would see in inflammatory bowel disease. And I don't want um, saying that to diminish what an IBS patient feels because it's debilitating, it can be embarrassing with the symptoms, it's not fun, and it can be painful. So let's talk in contrast about inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, ileocolitis, Crohn's colitis, jejunal itis, I don't know. Basically, if you hear itis at the end of a word, it means inflammation. IBD has basically all of those symptoms, but they may also have blood in their stool, they may have extreme weight loss. So just to give a little bit of the brief overview of what changes they might see on some of the tests that would diagnose you with IBD, and in those tests, what they don't see any changes in for IBS. So in things like your labs or your blood work, they might see increases in inflammation levels, which is gonna be your CRP or your sed rate. They might see iron deficiencies or other mineral deficiencies, other vitamin deficiencies, because oftentimes with Crohn's and colitis, you have nutritional deficiencies because everything's running right through you. They might be able to see um, if other organs are being affected. They often look at your liver and your kidney function because IBD can do that and also IBD medications can do that. Um, they might be able to tell if you have some sort of infection going on, if your white blood cells are going up. Um, like maybe you have an abscess. There are also a number of tests that both IBS and IBD patients um, might go through, such as CT scans, MRIs, um, you might get a colonoscopy, uh, an endoscopy, a sigmoidoscopy, an ileoscopy, all the oscopies. You might get all the oscopies. You might do some sort of barium test like an upper GI or a, like a barium swallow. You might do a barium enema. It all basically looks to see if they can find evidence of inflammation, like on MRIs, if there's some sort of enhancement, brighter image, <laughs> it might suggest that there is inflammation in that area. They look for things like strictures or narrowing of the intestines. They look for abscesses. They look for fistulas. They look for any areas like perforations. I can see a whole lot on this stuff. And obviously with the scopes, you're getting actual pictures of inflammation. Like with Crohn's disease, sometimes it has this sort of cobblestone appearance in the actual intestine. It's really cool looking, but also horrible. And going back to IBS and contrasting it with IBD, the treatment for both of them are different. Um, some things overlap, like diet can help a lot with both of them. Um, sometimes with IBS, they use different antidepressants. When you think of antidepressant, you think depression, but they can be used for a number of different things. It's actually um, very interesting when you get down to all the individual drugs used for depression and things like that. They have other things that they can do, which is really cool. Depending on what type of IBS you have, if you've got the constipation or the diarrhea one, you might use laxatives or you might use anti-diarrheals. Just depends on what you got going on there. Um, and then sometimes they use pain medication because it can be very painful. IBD, however, and the way it works, it, it's basically your immune system 
dysfunctioning. Inflammation can be really useful in the body. It does have a purpose, but sometimes it gets a little wacko and we get inflammation. Our body's attacking certain parts of our body. So in IBD, this autoimmune disease is attacking the GI tract. So because it deals with the immune system, a lot of the medications revolve around kind of handling that crazy immune system and, and calming it the frick down. There are other types of drugs that manage IBD and its symptoms. I know a lot of people get um, acid reflux, so they might put you on a proton pump inhibitor, which is a whole thing in itself. They might put you on medications that coat the intestines. They might even use medications that you see in IBS, like the antidiarrheals or laxatives for patients who are having difficulty going. Now the ultimate question is, can you have both inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome? And the answer is unfortunately yes. Imagine that you have IBD, you do all the things that you need to do, which are not easy to get it in remission, and you're still having symptoms. While clinically you are in remission, your symptoms are not in remission, and then you get diagnosed with IBS. Isn't life just grand? So I hope this video helped you to understand that IBS and IBD are two different things. Um, you can have both of them. There is a bit more risk with IBD, but that doesn't mean that both of these um, disorders or diseases, okay, IBS is a disorder, IBD is a disease, both of them have debilitating symptoms. They do. A lot of people suffer badly with IBS and a lot of people suffer badly with IBD. So that is not to diminish either one of them and what they they do. All right, I hope that you learned something from this video number one. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you are feeling good. I will see you in the next guys. Bye.